YouTubers. Welcome, welcome, welcome to P. Dinah Royally Teachable Moments. I hope you're doing well today. I have to give it to Miss Catherine. Girl has got elegance in class and she knows how to do what she does. She just has the it factor. And I think the it factor for Catherine is her talent and it's her just normality about going about doing the things that she does. Her surprise appearance at this Eurovision was spot on. You have this woman showing that she is doing something she obviously loves. She's studied, she's played. She's been able to master something that people enjoy listening to. She has followed her dreams of music. She's level five music theorist. She is someone that exudes just confidence, smarts, and just what you gotta do to, to make it in this world. She followed her dreams, her passions, and at the same time married a prince and is able to do her job as a royal family member very well with authenticity, with truth and compassion and real. I mean, the girl is just real and how she just engages with people and talks and you don't feel like she's rushing you or just speaking to just say, okay, what you gotta say, you know? <laughs> she seemed like, she's like, okay, you know, she's speaking to you and she's real. Like she gets it, she gets her place and she's able to at the same time do what she loves to do and that's her photography, that's her music and being in the arts and having the access to get people to watch you do your work as an artist has come together beautifully for her. She is somebody who the example is there. If only others would show a little bit of humility to want to portray that rather than trying to outshine that, if you know what I'm saying. Because there's a lot of people that can see this woman for what she is and what she does and appreciate it. But then there are those like within the royal family those specifically that have most recently left the royal family that see it and be like, oh, mm, I don't like you because you do things too well. You are outshining me. You're trying to be better than me. You're only doing that because you're trying to make yourself look more favorable than me because I'm number one. And we all know who that is, don't we? We all know. <laughs> Catherine, girl. I mean, could you ask for anything more than the example of this woman? And when I heard her playing with that beat, that music, I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, you go girl, you got some rhythm. I'm like listening and like, yeah, get in. I'm like, okay, let's, let's do this, you know? And looking beautiful with the dress all sprawled out and just, you know, just doing what she does and smiling and looking purdy and all those things. <laughs> I just was like, okay. This is what I'm talking about. So that's why when I speak about what I speak about, this is what we're trying to get to. This was always the, the vision of, of what we wanted to happen for other members of the royal family. But we don't have that with the others. We don't have this <laughs> with the wackadoo woman over in Montecito. She doesn't want to do it this way. She's trying to really sabotage what Miss Catherine is doing. And that is a, a real problem, I think, because I can see her trying to do very destructive things, just like in my last video about what their end game is going to be. Like they, they've got something up their sleeves. Don't you even think that they don't. They are definitely, she is definitely on on par with trying to get rid of this beautiful shining star. She came out to try to overshine that with this whole date night sushi thing with her husband. And you can almost like clockwork see, okay, yeah, she getting ready to come out. She getting ready to come out and try to outshine our star. But she couldn't because what Catherine was, was doing and the whole benefit for Ukraine, she was doing something that was of such interest that there's nothing that this dim 
light over here that's trying to outshine this beautiful star Catherine can do to outshine her because her perfection her abilities what she stands for is too good so I'm, I'm just so happy for Catherine and William because this is what they deserve because they are genuinely I believe in my truest heart that they are really good people doing good things really helping people making a difference while at the same time following her passion I'm very pleased with that. Very pleased. Footage of the performance was shared on the official Instagram account of Prince and Princess of Wales. A hashtag Eurovision surprise. The post's caption read, a pleasure to join at Kalush.official in a special performance of last year's winning at Eurovision entry. Enjoy the show, Liverpool. Now, there is some speculation around potential abdication by King Charles. This is what someone is speculating. And questions have been raised as to whether the oldest person to accede to the throne could abdicate, especially with 40-year-old Prince William waiting in the wings. They're saying one of the biggest challenges for King Charles right now is his age, considering that he is come into reign at such an older age and his frailty around being able to rule is causing some concern. And it does raise the question of the king abdicating. I hate to say it, but this is what's being said. Jeremy Black told Express that one crucial question for the British royal family of which King Charles is the head of is his age that he came into reign at 73 years of age. And one of the questions is, how is he going to deal with his growing frailty while they say he is fit to reign right now? As he continues to get older, what will this mean for his rulership as he is going to continually get older and subsequently be more fragile? in his older age. This is what people are speculating. Mr. Black praised King Charles for raising an able successor, adding the Windsors have now secured their grip on power with William to be followed by Prince George. He said that Prince William has a high degree of interpersonal skills, broad experience, a very stable and happy home life. The man is happy. The man ain't got no wife trying to outshine him and trying to tell him what to do. He has his foot firmly in the ground to sustain his family life. And what is so great about William and his family life is, is we're able to watch them grow. We're able to watch the children grow. They're accessible. You know, it's just like they're public people. You're public. So your life, everything that you do, People are, they want to see it. They feel as if you're a part of their family. And so watching you is just great. And they allow this access. This is why I think they're so beloved. And I think the biggest lesson of all is for the brother of this William to at some point try to figure it out in a way that, you know, the example that you already have, but we know it's just, oh, it's just so unfortunate, isn't it? It's just so unfortunate that it has to be this way for William's family. Like, like they got this, oh, this crazy man in the family. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's wrong with you? Like, how, why did this happen? Okay, so we have a potential abdication. We have Catherine shining bright, doing what she does. And now we have Harry has essentially come out and said, well, I couldn't marry the real woman that I love because of she didn't like the limelight. She just could what the press did to her made her not want to marry me. And it's, there, it's the press's fault that I could not marry the woman that I really wanted to marry. I mean, oh my goodness. Can you imagine what Megan is like? What? Excuse me, like I'm not the one that you really wanted to marry. No, you know, this this is a crack. If I ain't never seen a crack in a marriage and you trying to walk your way over to do some sushi night is not going to make me think differently. That right there is a clear indicator that from the very beginning, Harry did not even want to marry Megan. It was this Davy girl. This Chelsea Davy was the one that Harry really wanted to marry all along because 
he tried to show her the life that she would have. And, and to her credit, she was like, I don't want this. I do not want if this is what being with you means, I don't want it. And the girl bolted. She got out before she married the man, which was the right thing to do. The girl has got a good head on her shoulders. But then you just allowed for an opportunist to come in and say, OK, I'm going to do a thing because that's exactly what I want. <laughs> that's exactly what we know Megan would want. You couldn't even write this stuff. It's so crazy. And then we got Prince Andrew <laughs> refusing to leave. Essentially, Andrew is demanding a showdown with the king. He is challenging the king's authority and refusing to leave his residence because we know the king is going to be downsizing Andrew's residence and he is not happy about that. And it's not even like he got to move. It's not like he has to go pack his own bags and, and go through the headache of moving. He has people to do that for him. All he got to do is waltz his butt over into his new home and look, behold, all your things are there magically appear and you don't even want to do that. Mm, okay, Andrew. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with you. Get your butt up and get out of your house and go move your butt. And you, you ain't got no excuse. There ain't no excuse for it. It's, it's silly. So just stop. And I think Andrew is feeling empowered by Harry because now he's refusing to speak to his brother and talking to Sky News and looking for a showdown. And he even contemplated doing his own book. And I think he was inspired by Harry. And so Harry and his ignorance and his way of dealing with life is having an effect on this other royal family member who has also been pushed out of public life. You could not make this stuff up. And so I think Andrew is feeling a little bit emboldened by Harry. And I think there was even talks of him even living or moving to California. It's so <laughs> crazy. It's crazy. Okay. We'll have to keep talking about this, folks. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.